it's been a while so it's been about a year and a half since i made a video maybe a little shorter a little longer i don't know but i'm back today to make a video and i thought i would talk about valves nobody requested this but i'm gonna just make it oh and this is my new dog kuma say hi kuma <laughs> but anyway so i want to talk about valves for a couple of reasons first reason is because i actually personally have a mechanical valve and also because my husband happens to have a prosthetic valve. So I thought, what are the chances that a married couple has both of the different kinds of valves? Probably not very high. So we thought, well, so I asked my husband to do this video with me, but he's too busy. So I'm gonna just do it myself. All right, well, my camera died as soon as I started recording this. So I'm gonna go over the different kinds of valves. So essentially there is a mechanical valve and there's a prosthetic valve. So there are some differences between the two. So I'll start with mechanical valves, tell you all about the pros and the cons, and then we'll go to prosthetic valves. And I'll also share my experience with my mechanical valve as well as my husband's experience with his prosthetic valve um, when I talk about those. And before I get into the mechanical versus prosthetic valves, first let's just talk about valves in general. So in the heart, there are different valves that can be replaced. The most common valves that are replaced are aortic and mitral. Less commonly, but what could also be replaced is the pulmonary valve as well as a tricuspid valve. So I have an aortic valve replacement. My husband has a pulmonary valve replacement. So everybody is a little bit different, but this information is just in general about valves. However, whatever valve you are having replaced may make things a little bit different in what your doctors are recommending to you. So be sure to talk to your doctor about that. So first let's talk about mechanical valves. So a mechanical valve is a synthetic valve. It's generally made of materials including titanium. It could also be made of carbon. The biggest benefit of a mechanical valve is the fact that it can last a lifetime. However, the biggest downside of a mechanical valve is that you do have to take anticoagulants, which is also called blood thinners. Many doctors prefer to use mechanical valves in younger patients because it does last, last a lifetime. It's a lot more durable and there's a lot less risk of having to be re-operated on to replace that valve. But like I mentioned, the drawback is that you do have to take blood thinners because it is a synthetic valve. It has a higher risk of causing blood clots in your body. So you do have to take blood thinners for the rest of your life. I know that might sound scary. A lot of people do not want mechanical valves for that very reason, but I personally have a mechanical valve and I'm on blood thinners. And while it's not my favorite thing in the world and sometimes I do really wish that I wasn't, it honestly isn't as bad as I thought it would be. I have another video where I go more into detail on Warfarin, which is the blood thinner that you would take on a mechanical valve. So if you want to hear more details about that, feel free to scroll back through my videos and you can find it there. Of note, there is a new mechanical valve called the Onyx valve. That is what I have as well. It is made of pure carbon. It's the only valve that's made of pure carbon. And it's actually really great because it has a very low INR goal, meaning that you don't have to really take as much warfarin as standard mechanical valves. Of course, because you do have to take blood thinners with these valves, there is a higher risk of bleeding. But if you are younger and do get this valve, hopefully it will last the rest of your life. It's not to say that it's gonna last forever for everyone. Some people may have complications more than others. However, it is expected to be quite durable and last a lifetime. My personal experience with the mechanical valve has been okay. Um, like I mentioned, blood thinners can be hit or miss. Some weeks it's okay. Some weeks I do miss eating my green leafy vegetables, but it's an adjustment for sure. However, it's honestly nice to know that i never have to have this valve replaced knock on wood but it's it's reassuring to know that it is durable i'm glad that i got the onyx valve in my case i did not have a decision on what valve that i was going to get i learned literally while i was being rolled into the or that i was going to get this valve my situation was a lot more emergent so i didn't have time to research or do those kinds of things but with all that being said I don't regret getting it. I most likely would have had a lot more anxiety if I had known that I had a prosthetic valve and I had to continuously get surgery to replace it. So overall, I'm happy with my decision with my mechanical valve. Okay, so we talked about mechanical valves. Now let's talk about prosthetic valves. Prosthetic valves are essentially what it sounds like as well. It's a valve that is made from tissue. So it's usually from a cow or a pig. So of course there are pros and cons to this valve. The biggest pro is that you do not have to take blood thinners for the rest of your life. 
There may be some cases where you do have to take blood thinners for the first three months or so until your body adjusts to the valve. However, it is not required for the duration of your life. This is pretty much the reason that most people choose to have a prosthetic valve. It is very nice to not have to worry about the anticoagulation. However, there are some drawbacks to this valve. Since it is a tissue valve, it does not last forever. Generally, these valves need to be replaced every 10 to 15 years. Because of this, that means you may need to undergo an operation again and again throughout the course of your life, depending on how old you are when you get this valve replaced initially. Doctors may prefer not to use this valve in people that are high risk of surgery. So people that they really don't wanna be continuously going through surgery through their life. So some doctors may prefer to use these valves in patients that have some type of contraindication to anticoagulants. So that would mean patients that maybe are allergic to warfarin or can't take blood thinners for whatever reason. However, although this valve does need to re be replaced every 10 to 15 years, there are new, more advanced ways to replace it that are less invasive than open heart surgery. Of course, when you first get the valve, you more than likely do need to have open heart surgery. However, to have it replaced, you may be able to have what's called a TAVR or a similar procedure. A TAVR is a newer procedure. It's only available right now for aortic valve called the transcatheter aortic valve replacement. And it's a minimally invasive way to replace an aortic valve. It's important to remember that not everybody is a candidate for this procedure, but it's important to talk to your doctor about this if you do need to have your aortic valve replaced and to see if maybe that's an option for you. So like I said, my husband does have a prosthetic valve he has Tetralogy of Fallot, which is a congenital heart condition that he was born with. He had open heart surgery as a baby and again when he was 19 years old. He does have a prosthetic valve, which is made from a pig valve. He is now 31 years old. Oh, actually he's 32 now. He just had a birthday but he has not had to have his valve replaced since he was 19. So he is making it last pretty long. He hasn't had many issues. He's been doing really well. He has been doing great and has definitely enjoyed his time not having to take blood thinners. On the other hand, it is a little bit stressful for him to have to continuously go and have follow-ups to check on his heart to see when he needs to have that replaced again. Lately, he has been having issues with heart palpitations. He has to get an echo every six months and then decide eventually when it's time to have that replaced. So there are some pros, of course, no blood thinners, but then the cons are you do have to have surgery more than likely a few times throughout your life. Also for prosthetic valves, in the case of my husband, he was never recommended to do this until the past couple of years, but I believe that some cardiologists do want their patients on prosthetic valves to be taking aspirin 81 milligrams every day. It doesn't sound like that big of a deal, but it is just something worth noting that you don't necessarily get to not take any medications. Your doctor may recommend that you take aspirin, but again, it is completely up to your doctor. I'm not a cardiologist, so please defer all of your questions about that to your doctor. So if you're between valves, this is just some information and a firsthand perspective on, you know, how the valves are in real life people. I would say a mechanical valve is a great option if you're younger, just to prevent yourself from having to have surgery and having to stress about that. If it's not a big deal to you to take blood thinners, I would definitely recommend the mechanical valve. If you are a very adventurous person and you just do not wanna take blood thinners, definitely talk to your doctor about the prosthetic valve, but do keep in mind that you will need to have surgery throughout the course of your life. All right, well, this was just a really quick video. I don't know why, but I am sweating. It's like 110 degrees. In other news, my husband and I moved to Texas last year. The last time I filmed a YouTube video, I was living in California. I know if you're from Texas, please don't come at me. I know the Californians are Californian in the Texas, but I am not originally from California, so I don't claim to be part of that. However, anyways, there's been a lot of life updates. I hopefully will make a lot of more videos soon, uh, but I hope everybody's doing great. Please send me ideas of videos that you're interested in. It took me so long to think of a video. And thank you to all of the new subscribers that I've gained in my absence. I still check my comments um, on the reg and I try to reply, but I'm really grateful for all of the support. So thank you guys and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Say bye, Kuma. Bye. <laughs>